Hello, fellow podcasters. It's me, Dan Benjamin. And today we are going to be talking about how to record your podcast using Audio Hijack on the Mac. It's an amazing piece of software, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it coming up now. That's right. We're talking about Audio Hijack on the Mac. This is how I record my shows and how I recommend if you have a Mac, how you consider recording yours. It's great whether you have multiple guests in the same studio with you or whether they're remote coming in over Skype or another application. I'm going to show you with Skype, but this is the best way to record. I've recorded using everything. I've recorded, uh, gosh, using QuickTime, Logic, Pro Tools, you name it, I've used it. And after doing this now since 2006, I have found that Audio Hijack Pro, if you're on a Mac, is the best way to do it. And I'm going to show you exactly how I go about configuring it from start to finish so that you can use a setup like mine or similar to mine to record, whether it's with people locally or remote people on Skype. That's going to be the main focus because that's the way that a lot of people are still recording today. Now, I did another video where I talked about double enders where you can record and have the remote person record. That's still what I do most of the time, but I'm using the local copy of their audio that I record with Audio Hijack to align and correctly uh, synchronize their audio with my audio here. Because as you know, audio drift happens when you're recording with people in remote locations. So before I show you that, of course, it is time. Like and subscribe and ring the bell makes a big difference. Leave your comments down below. Do you like this? Do you agree? You disagree? You want other videos? Ask me questions. In the comments, I'll answer every single one of them. That's a promise. And uh, I want to say one more thing. If you want to support the work that I do, I've got a Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Dan Benjamin. Feel like helping out? Help out. If you don't, enjoy the video. And let's dive in. Here we are in Audio Hijack, and I'm going to show you the exact way that I record almost all of the podcasts that I do and have done for a few years now. I'm going to start by creating a new session. Now, when I start with a new session, I usually choose input device as the template. Uh, that just seems to work better for me. You could certainly start with a blank session and add the input device, but this is just, it skips one step, so why not? Now, here is our new session, and you can see that it already has the input device that it's selected, and it has the MacBook Pro mic, which is not what I want to use. I want to change that. In this case, I've got a Scarlett 2i2 connected on a USB port. So I'll pick that, uh, but that's not enough. I, there's a little bit more that I have to do here because uh, each audio interface that you have potentially has uh, multiple channels coming through. And in my case, there are two channels, uh, one for the first mic and one for the second mic. I actually want to set both of these to be channel one. I really want a mono recording. We'll get to those details in a little bit, but that way I'm only getting what's coming in through the first channel. Okay, so that's it for that. Now here, I'm going to control the format that the file's actually saved in. And I have uh, a couple different choices. The default is a high quality MP3 file. And that's good, I like that. Um, most of the applications that you'll be doing editing with these days, and that's perfectly enough. Now, but I don't like the defaults. Now, some people would say, wait a minute, what about an AIF file or a WAV file? Yeah, you can absolutely use those file types instead if you want. But in my experience, especially considering that I'll be mixing this down to like a 96 kbps or 128 kbps file, it really just takes up a ton of extra space. Like I've said in other episodes of this program, I, I'm not narrating like a National Geographic special. The podcast will be enjoyed by people at much, much lower bandwidth. So there really isn't a reason to save it as an AIF file. If I was, if I was recording a band and I was making an album, or if I was recording a, a narration for a National Geographic special, I probably would pick an AIF or a WAV file, but I'm not. However, these MP3 settings are not what I want. For example, a bit rate of 256 kbps, that's fine. It's a little bit overkill. Again, I'm probably mixing it down to 128 or 96 anyway. So generally, I'll pick 192. If you want to leave it at 256 and you've got a lot of disk space, sure, go ahead. But for me, 192. I do not want variable bit rate. I want constant bit rate. If you don't know what that means, that's a whole other show. But 
traffic constant, sample rate. Generally, in audio recording, I see 48,000 hertz more than I see 44. There are people who will say 44.1 uh, is enough. I go with 48. That's also the default that the Focusrite records at, so there's no conversion that has to happen there. Uh, you can change that in the Focusrite. You can change it in almost all audio interfaces. But uh, 48,000 is pretty much the standard. And of course, you don't want joint stereo. I don't want any stereo because mono. So I pick mono. And what I can also do if I want is I can change the, the location and the file name. But for the sake of argument right now, this is just fine. I'm going to leave it at input, input device recording and uh, date and time and save in the audio hijack folder. You can control that. And I do actually for different shows that I do, if I'm recording an episode of one show, I might have it have the show name here as the file name with the date and time associated with it. If I'm recording multiple people, I might have their name in there as well to help keep those different tracks. Uh, so for right now, I'll leave input device recording, but I'll go ahead and put my, uh, my name in here so that I know that that is going to be my track. You don't really need to worry about file limits. Um, that's just not something that, um, that, that we need to worry about. We don't need it to start a new file or anything like that. It's fine just the way that it is. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make this window a little bit bigger so that you can see what I'm doing in here because as you start to add additional devices, it requires a little bit more work. Now, something else that I like to do is I really like to have some kind of meters going so that I can see where the, the levels are for me and, and the guests. And there's a handful of different meters that you can use. It really just depends on the style that you like. For example, the peak RMS meter, that's the one that I generally use the most. And in a second, I'll speak into that microphone. I'm recording with a different microphone. And you can see the peak levels start to move once I get the whole recording set up. Now, if you want, if you want to be Mr. Fancy, you can use VU meters. Uh, and I'll put both of these in here so that you can actually see what they both look like. But I recommend having at least one meter in there. Now, there's a lot of audio effects you can also put on uh, here. I don't do any of those. I like to have either my preamp, uh, my audio interface do them, or I like to do them in post. I, I never use them in here. And uh, there are people who, who would say, you're crazy, they're great, and they have the, tons of these uh, built-in effects as well. You can put low-pass filters, you can do all kinds of stuff. I just generally don't need to do that in this application. I, I have a workflow, and it happens for me mostly in post. Now, there's another source that I want to add. Of course, we're talking about my Skype guest. So I will drag application over, and then I'll get to choose the application. You'll see that recent applications are highlighted here at the top. And if the application that I wanted to use wasn't in here, I could select the application. But in this case, it'll be Skype. So I'll pick Skype. But there are some details here that are very important. Obviously, you, uh, you don't want to include the audio input. Uh, I'm already recording the audio input right here. So I want to uncheck that. I also want to make sure that I fill playback gaps with silence. And I don't want to limit audio capture. I also like to add meters to my Skype guest as well. And I'll just put the peak RMS meter in there instead of the VU meter because you're going to get the idea. So I also want to add in a recorder for the Skype input, the Skype channel, and I will go ahead and make these settings pretty much the same as they were for my audio track. I'll just name this input device, even though it's not, and I'll put that down as guest. And I want to go in and change these settings again, the same way that I did before. So once again, we set it to 192 kbps. We have a constant bit rate. 48 hertz and mono. And now we're ready to record. However, depending on the audio interface, and most of them work this way, you, if I were to hit record here, you're not going to be able to hear your guest. And that's because Audio Hijack will hijack the audio. So you need to add an output device and you need to set that to be whatever your headphones are plugged into. So if you're headphones are plugged into your Scarlett 2i2 like mine are, well, then that's what you want it to be set to. But if they're plugged into your other USB mic, you'd set it to that. If they're plugged into headphones or if you just want to listen in some other way, then you want to change that to the device. So as you can see here, I've got a few different options. Uh, the Scarlett 2i2 is what I want to use. That's what my headphones are plugged into. 
And with that, I am ready to record. And now I am recording. And uh, if my guest is there, they can speak. And as you can see, here goes the show. And uh, this is what it looks like while you're recording. You can watch the levels both on the peak meters and the VU meters. And then when my guest speaks, you can see their meters moving as well. Now I can go and grab those files and edit them with my favorite audio editing application. And that's it. That's how I set up and use Audio Hijack for my podcasts. And that's it. That's how I record using Audio Hijack. You get it all? If not, rewatch the video, but I'm sure that you did because it's super straightforward, right? And now you can record the same way that I do. And I hope that you find this has been a useful tutorial for you. Again, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.